Hey guys, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and welcome back to the Mobile Gamer Nerd Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about uh, some old games that are really fun. Random games, all kinds of games, yeah. All the old school games that everyone remembers that uh, I used to play. I'm, we're going to go through a couple and uh, yeah, see, see what happens. I, I just know that I actually have a lot of really good... Really good memories of a lot of old games, and some of them are even stupid. Like, we're talking about like Sim City. Like, we're talking about terrible, terrible games. And I mean the Sim City one for I think it was Super Nintendo, and that one was really fun, where your buildings all lit on fire, and it was a pain in the ass. You had to connect the electricity, all that stuff. You know, like it's stuff that you remember as being good when you played it. And who knows, it might not be good now. I might revisit that game eventually and be like, you know what? This game is freaking trash. I don't know. But there's still games that I enjoyed way back in the day, and I'm hoping that you enjoyed them too. So, I mean, since we're already on SimCity, well, I might as well talk about it. So, I used to play that one. I know there was a hack. There was a hack on that game where you could get like a ton of silver and gold or whatever you get in that game money, regular dollars. And it was a lot of fun. I would actually play that game for hours. And I remember starting over new games all the time. Like I would always try new things. I would try doing dumb stuff like just building railroads around the entire city. I would try building only one type of building as many times as I could. Uh, I tried. I think there was a way that you could overpopulate the city. You could beat the game extremely quickly, but your game would fail within like and like maybe thirty minutes to an hour of actually doing it. I forgot what it was. It's been a long time since I've actually played it, but I remember that. You could definitely cheat that game really hardcore. There was a lot of games back then that you could really cheat. And I'm not a big cheater, but at the same time, that was back in the day when everything was offline. So nothing you did was really like shown to anyone unless you like played it on a video. But yeah, no one knew what you were doing. So who cared? I mean, if you had fun, if you had, if you were enjoying it, then it didn't really matter. But yeah, SimCity was definitely one of those. It was a really weird game. I, I actually remember enjoying the music. Like it was very, it was very melodic and kind of just kept you going for a little bit. And I would just put the music on sometimes and just like do something else while the music was playing. It was just relaxing and it was fun to watch your buildings burn sometimes. Sometimes it was annoying, but other times you're like, you know what? I'm in chaos mode. Let's go. I'm going to do some chaos mode stuff and we're going to do that. Um, I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily say that, uh, I'm trying to think of what some old games like, like Chrono Trigger. I remember Chrono Trigger, and that game was, it's funny, everyone loves that game, and I remember liking it, I remember playing it and beating it, and I know it's a classic, but I don't know, I didn't really, I I wouldn't revisit it, like I think I played it once, because it's been re-released like on every, it's been on like mobile systems, it's been on PC, it's been on, it's, it's been on everything. They re-released it on Nintendo, like you could probably download it from anywhere. And I played it again and I was like, eh, I just didn't enjoy it anymore. I thought it, I, I, I liked it when it came out, but it was definitely one of those games that I never really got into. And I know there was a bunch of other games that I got excited because I thought they were like continuations of it. Like, what was it Chrono Cross? I, don't, I honestly don't even know. Chrono Cross was like one of them. I never played it. I think I looked at it once and I'm like, eh, I just, I think I got into that point where I, once Chrono Cross came out, I started moving away from that RPG, J, JRPG kind of format. I do still like them, but I can't, I can't find one that I get into. Like the closest thing I could say that I got into would have been like Dragon Quest. The Dragon Quests are probably some of the best games I've ever played. I mean, as far as like, you know, RPGs go. They were, the graphics are cool. The enemies are cool. I like the world of uh, of Dragon Quest. Not necessarily D uh, Dragon Warrior. Dragon Warrior was good. The Nintendo versions, like the old school one. I think I played the first one over and over again. Uh, after the first one, none of the Dragon Warriors were really good to me. Like I didn't enjoy them. I just didn't like them. And it was because it was because it was the same nonsense every time. And when Dragon Quest came out. I was like, what is this? And I think, was it Dragon Quest Seven? I think it was, where you get the little fat Viking guy. And yeah, that game was really good. There was also a Dragon Quest on the mobile system. I think it was Nintendo, uh, whichever one was the one with the flip screen. That, not the little one, like the, the next one that was a little bit bigger. And that one was my favorite because 
you basically get to level up jobs. You you get to create your own heroes. You get to name them. So there's no like, oh, this is the hero of the game. Like, no, every one of your heroes is going to be someone that you created. That's kind of cool. And you can unlock a ton of different jobs and you can get everything. Every, every time you got gear, it changed how your characters looked. Like, it's it's the little things, the little stuff. And apparently you're a ghost, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. I know you're a ghost and you're like you're almost like it's almost like a Valkyrie kind of thing where you just go through and the main part of the game, if I remember correct, it's been a while, is that you're like saving people and some of them are dead, like or you're doing requests for people who are dead and you're trying to like f- whatever the whatever happened to them in death, you're trying to resolve in life essentially by like either killing the thing that killed them or saving their family, like things like that. Very good story, surprisingly enough. I didn't think it was going to be as good. The stories in that in Dragon Quest are probably the best I've seen, and I don't get very into stories. Like I actually, I skip cutscenes constantly. I'm a jerk like that, and that game actually kept my interest. Like even some, even like the first quest in the game. Like you're like going in, and like I think one of them, you go to a town where like everyone was cursed. And they they like blame you or something, and they you like they act like you were you're the one that's bringing the curse upon them because you did something wrong, and you end up going to like this dungeon where like somebody actually ended up releasing this curse on the town because he was like mad at like somebody for like hurting him or something, so he released the curse on the town. Like I said, this is just vague. I don't know if I how much of it's one hundred percent correct, but this is the generalized idea of it, and you basically just went to this dungeon and you find out that this guy was like basically manipulating the whole thing. You kill this worm monster, whatever spirit monster that was controlling this guy, which you find out at the end of the dungeon and realize it really wasn't even him at all. It was just some demon. And then you're like, Oh, that's cool. And then you have to decide, you know, whether or not you're going to kill him and all this other stuff. And then everyone loves you when you get back to the town and yeah, great game. I forgot what it was called though. It's like, it's like, it's Dragon Quest something or other, and I don't know if it was like a different, if it was a number, or if it was hmm, one of those named ones. I'm not sure, honestly. But either way, if you have t- if you have that Nintendo system, the, the mobile one that flips open, it's a little bit wider. It's almost the size of a controller. I forgot what it was called. Um, I don't know if it was just DS DS Lite. Like I don't, I don't remember, but that was probably one of the best Dragon Warriors I think I've ever played. Uh, as far as other games back in the day. You could push yourself into Mega Man. Mega Man was probably one of the best franchises, and one of the longest running franchises. I think they're still making them. Uh, I mean, he's in he's in Smash Bros. If you're in Smash Brothers, you're basically a legend, <laughs> I guess. Because you what you got Kirby, you got Mega Man, you've got Mario, you've Mario, whatever. You've got Zelda, you've got Link. It's funny that Zelda came first because the name the name of the game is Zelda, but Link is not Zelda. Uh, Link's in there. There's so many heroes in there. I think uh, was it Belmont's in there from the Castlevania series. So yeah, a lot of good stuff in there. But Mega Man was like one of those games that I would never play now. Like if I were to go back and play Mega Man one, two, three, all I would freaking hate them because they were so clunky and insanely hard. But back then, that's all you had. So you really didn't know any better. So you were just like, all right, I'm going to bang my head against the wall and try to beat these games. And it was fun. You were like, this is great. I, I've never seen a video game where you get to climb walls and jump on platforms that disappear in three seconds. And that was all like new stuff. That was all the new things that had come out. And I remember that Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, I basically played through all of those. And I think I beat them. I've played every single other game. I think I've played them all. Yeah, I have. I've played all of them, but I haven't, I don't think I've beaten all of them. I know I beat one, two, and three. And then past that, I honestly don't remember which enemies were in which. There's too many. There's like so many robots like Mr. Ice, and it got crazy. The one that I remember being really good that I played a lot, though, was the one for Super Nintendo, the first one that had come out. That one was really fun. I think they did a really good job of kind of in reinvigorating the series by adding like these like tubes that you get to get new parts for your armor and like stuff like that, like it was upgrades, things like that. And they started getting a little more, a little more ingenuity into just the formula of just running and climbing stairs and shooting things and finding the right weapon to kill a boss. Like there was a little bit more into it than that, and I think that's what kind of propelled it a little bit forward.
also in that platform. I'm not going to talk much about it because I didn't, I didn't really remember too much or play it, but like DuckTales, yeah. I remember playing it, but I just don't remember a lot about it. I just know that I really liked DuckTales, the cartoon, back then. And I was like, I mean, who doesn't like DuckTales, right? Who doesn't like DuckTales? Freaking greatest cartoon out there, I think, for anybody who was in the 80s, 90s area, uh, area, whatever you want to call it, era, era, era. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was. But DuckTales was fun. It was in that same vein as like, uh, what was that stupid game? Oh my god, I forgot. I, I talked about it, I think, on another, it was another uh, side-scrolling game. If I had to pick one game that was like really good back then, Bonk's Adventure. Bonk's is, I think, I don't know if I've talked about this before, I, I probably have brought it up, but Bonk's Adventure on Turbo Graphics is still to this day one of my favorite games ever made. Uh, you may know that because if you watch the intro video on my channel, when you log in on the computer, it always goes off and you hear that music. That is actually the ending music for Bonk's Adventure, if you didn't know that. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite games. I love the ending sequence in that game. The music in it was great. I used to play it with Turbo, because Turbo Graphics had, a, had a, a Turbo Switch, which was basically cheat mode, but it was fun. And I played that game nonstop on Turbo, because you could literally just jump and then hit the Turbo button, and then because Bonk spins. He's a caveman, he's got a big head turns around, drops on something, and kills him. So what you do is, is you would just spin nonstop super fast, and you would just fly across the screen. So like you would get a power-up, almost like Mario Brothers, where you go really fast, and you would just click the button, spin, and you could jump on a high mountain and basically spin your way across the entire level without really ever touching the ground. And if you accidentally hit something like bonking them if you hit an enemy it would actually bounce you up so what you could do is you could spin really fast and go on an angle and then when you saw a monster slow down because you can control going backwards and forwards like you didn't have to just go forward and you would just kind of control yourself onto an enemy and it would propel you up in the air again and then you literally never touched the ground and it was a lot of fun the bosses in that game were super fun uh, I, every one of them was cool and it was cool that you're like basically releasing them like they were giant monsters that you fight the boss music was phenomenal in this game and I think the most iconic boss in there was like the princess that you're trying to save she's actually a, a boss because they took her over and she's the princess and she's got a robot car and you, you basically watch her stand on like the top of a castle and she has a little remote, little remote control and you fight the, the remote control car. And that's like one of the iconic scenes. I think it might even be on the cover of the, of the game, if I remember, or in the booklet. But yeah, Bonk's Adventure, literally one of the best games I think I've ever played in my life. And that's why it's on there. Uh, all right. So if we're going to talk about, you know, so we're already talking about all these games outside of Bonk, but uh, all these games that are the heroes that are from Smash Brothers. I think we can't we can't deny the Zelda franchise, but what I would say is that out of all the Zeldas that I've played, I mean, I've played I've played them all except for the newer versions. Like we're talking old school versions. So I played the first one. I played a Link. Uh, Link, the second one, whatever it was called. That one was weird. It was side-scrolling, but for some reason, I loved it. Like It was one of my favorite games, and I would just play it nonstop. Uh, I remember the dungeon being cool. I liked getting all the upgrades in the game. Yeah, Zelda 2, honestly, even though the first one's more iconic and probably the one that everyone likes, I spent way more time on the second one. And I would re the replay value of the second one was was very high. And I remember the final boss being really annoying, but other than that, it was still my fun the funnest game you got to level up which i enjoyed you could just run around and, and kill things and get potions and level up and that 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 made me like it i enjoyed that it was a lot of fun uh link to the past the super nintendo version was i would say far and away the best zelda ever made like i'm gonna i'm gonna die on that hill i'm okay with that i will die on that hill link to the past is the best zelda ever made I don't care about Majora's Mask. I don't care about the new one that just came out where you run around with the swords. Like, I don't care about any of them. I don't care about the first Zelda. Super Nintendo, Link to the Past. First one, best Zelda ever. And that is another one of those games that I would... The replay value in that game was insane. They introduced the Dark World where you would go back and forth between the light and dark world to fight bosses. And it was cool because you basically like ran around, you killed all these bosses, and you're like, oh, this is, I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden, you get to that boss fight where it's like, whatever, Illusion Ganon or whatever it was called, and you've beat that boss, 
And then immediately they drop you into the dark world and you're like, what? The? It's like the game just restarts. And all of a sudden now you're in a dark world and you're like, what the hell? And you're lost. And you, I think you have to beat the first boss, if I remember correctly, to, to get out of it. And because I know you have to get like some kind of flute or whatever it was. And you fight the first boss and like, okay, so now I have to do this all again. And you figure out that you find this flute and then you can transfer yourself back and forth between dark and light, which is even another layer because you had to do that in order to get into certain spots of the game. The bosses in the game were freaking awesome. Every single one of them was very well made. There was a bunch that were like, like the, at that time, those kinds of bosses didn't exist. Like, so good. Very good game. Um, there was another game that was like it. And I can't remember what it was called. I'll think about it for a little bit, but it was that whole dungeon explorer type game. And I remember there was one that I had played back then. I think it was also on Turbo Graphics that I really enjoyed. But Zelda, the newer ones don't really do much for me. I can't say that I actually like them, to be honest. Like, I didn't really like the the open world versions of it. Like, what was that? Um Majora's Mask. Yeah, Majora's Mask was I played. I beat that one, but the newer one where you were on the water with the with the boats, that lit- quite literally the worst game I've ever played. Like I got so bored in that game, and I was really excited about it because I did enjoy Majora's Mask. It wasn't as good as I hoped, but it was good. And I was like, okay, so this will be good. And yeah, no, trash. I I I will I will crap on Wind Waker. Is that what was it called Wind Waker? I will crap on that game all day. I hated it, and. Just the travel alone just made me angry, and I couldn't stand it. So if you like that game and that bothers you, I apologize. That's not true. I don't apologize. You're allowed to like it, and I'm allowed to hate it. Take it. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I do think that Wind Waker was one of the worst games ever made. Yeah, and I will. I, that's another hill that I will die on. Other than that, I didn't. I kind of stopped with Zelda after a while. I didn't play. I, my friends would play that little one where you. It's like the dancing one that was the new. That new one where you like run around and have to do it to the music, whatever that was about. I don't know. I didn't like it, but they liked it. I heard it was a really fun game for like you know if you're into like dancing and Link, I guess. But I didn't really like that one. I did play a few of the ones. <laughs> on uh, yeah, DS, I think it was. There was the one where you had the four different color links and it was like a, you could play with other people. I remember playing that one. I never played with anyone though. So it, it got bored, boring pretty quickly. But yeah, that was my, that's my Zelda experience. But the original ones were all were awesome. I think everything up until Majora's Mask was, was, was reasonably built. And after that, I just kind of lost interest in it. Anytime a game is not open world and then they change it, into an open world game, it almost it just it just does it loses the feel of what the original was. I think like if you play Skyrim, and Skyrim is awesome, so I enjoy Skyrim. I'll play Skyrim because I want to. When I play Skyrim, it's because I want to play a Skyrim game. When I play Zelda, my original opinion of it is that dungeon crawl, that side, that like flat down dungeon. You know, that's essentially what I want. When they start going into this whole open world thing, and then you've got to worry about camera angles, and it's just like it turns into something that I don't, I don't like anymore. Newer players, yeah, they're gonna love it because they grew up with that. They grew up with this whole open world. Everything's a twenty minute excursion to get somewhere. Like, oh, it's so realistic that I have to ride a horse forty minutes to get to this temple. Like, yeah, I get it. I don't like it. Like, that's not my thing, and that's honestly why. I mean, I've said it before. That's why the freaking in Dark Souls, why I can't stand Elden Ring. Like, it just it just didn't work for me. I didn't like the open world version of it. I liked feeling claustrophobic. I liked not knowing where I was going within this small confined area. It, it added to the game, and I don't think that the open world added anything to Elden Ring. I think all it did was add a bunch of walking around and being aimless while you try to find something to do. So, yeah, I didn't like it. And um, I'm going to stand on that one. I know people love it, but I hate it. Um, once again, we're still sitting on that. I don't know how Smash Brothers became the thing, but uh, it's basically Metroid, because Samus is in there. And Samus is a girl, if you didn't know that. Most people know that by now. If you know who Samus is, you probably know that she's a girl. But if you only played Metroid with the helmets on, then you probably... Uh, yeah, you probably didn't. You didn't know that. <laughs> um, unless you beat it. So basically that Metroid, Super Metroid is the first game that I think really got me into gaming. Like 
I would say the reg- the first Metroid itself on Nintendo was good, and I played it a lot. Did I love it? No, I liked it. It was fun. It was a little clunky, a little annoying to get certain parts of the game down. Half the time you didn't know where you were going because every because the graphics were like very all over the place. Like it's like that that like sandpaper kind of graphics where not everything looked like it melted into everything. So it was good, and I enjoyed it while it was out. But I didn't. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. I w- I wouldn't call it. I mean, it is a classic, and it was definitely good. But yeah, I wouldn't go back and replay it. <clears throat> Super Nintendo though, Metroid. I would play that game over and over again. It's basically on par with like all the Super Nintendo. I think Super Nintendo really was the age of innovation. In, in, uh, age of innovation for gaming. Like it really did push forward boundaries and make a lot of really fun games that were basically. I think it was like a a spot in time where games were not so simplistic that they were boring like like when you play like atari with like the little tanks that drive around it wasn't so simplistic where you get bored quickly but it wasn't so overbearing and convoluted and crazy like it is now like now games they just they're just trying to throw a whole bunch of ideas into one game and see if they stick like most of them don't have like a cohesive thing going on that really keeps them going I'm not saying all of them, obviously. You can't say that about every game, but your your generalized idea of most games is like it just seems like it's like, hey, we're gonna make a game. All right, what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna throw fishing in it, we're gonna throw catching bugs, we're gonna throw building, we're gonna throw it's like it's like how many things can we throw into one game to make it good? It's like, why don't you just pick one and create the best one of that you can. And a lot and they don't seem to understand that. They think they're trying to I think what they're trying to do is bring in more players by adding more items to a game when in reality like if I'm a person that likes RPGs and I don't like fishing. I'm not going to really want to fish in that RPG, you know? But if I do like fishing and I hate RPGs, then I'm more likely to go play a fishing game. But however, there are games like where like what was it Fallout 4 where it's it's an open world game and I played it for a little bit, but I spent the whole time building my base. So, like, those are the kinds of things that, like, they honestly detract from whatever the game is. I never beat Fallout 4. Never. I got through a little bit of the campaign, and then I spent, I think, honestly, like, three weeks, four weeks just building my base and having fun. And then I stopped playing it and forgot the game even existed. So, having those things in the games is fun, but it's, like, it's just, it's it's all distraction. And then eventually you're like, what the hell was I doing? And you forget, and you're just like, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to go do something else. <laughs> but I think that's kind of the distraction that I'm talking about. And I think Super Nintendo is a perfect encapsulation of all the good time. all The, the time in gaming when everything was actually just a it was all just good games every game was a category every game wasn't like a mishmash of things it was literally like here's a cool rpg here's a cool side scrolling game here's a cool farming game like everything was good like what did you, what was that game um the farming game i forgot what it was called oh my god i'm i'm trying i'm thinking like stardust but it's not that i'm sure somebody here will know if they listen to this but metroid was that metroid was a side scrolling shooter game and that's what it was there wasn't like a Oh, you know, pay for this expansion. There wasn't like, uh, hey, man, if you uh, run through this part, you can play a bird watching ga- mini game. Like, I don't want to play a bird watching mini game, especially, especially if you put it in the game as something you have to do. If I have to do this to to progress, that makes me almost hate a game. Like, if I'm like, okay, so we're gonna keep interjecting with these stupid little mini games that I have to do. Yeah, I'm done. I want to play the game. I don't want to play your little mini game, but. Metroid was fun. I played that game over and over again. There was the ones on DS that were really good. All of the DS ones, all of the Super Nintendo ones. Great. I don't, was there another set? I think there was only one Super Nintendo. Maybe there was two. I don't remember. There might have been like an import or something like that. But the ones on DS were really good too. All of those side-scrolling ones that were basically based around Super Nintendo's version, all of those were like the best Metroids out there. The 3D ones sucked. I couldn't stand them. I think I played the first one and I was like, this is garbage, and I turned it off. Uh, kind of the same way I felt about Castlevania. Where, essentially, like, that Castlevania, like, what they, they call it Metroidvania, because both of them did it. Uh, I think Metroid started it. I don't remember which one came out first. But, either way, both of those games really just m- were awesome. Castlevania and Metroid in the Super Nintendo world. Best games ever made. Uh, Castlevania, I don't think, ever really came back for me, except for in the DS and the handheld versions. 
those are the ones I really like. Circle the Moon. I think we've talked about that before, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But that was when I was really into Castlevania, and that's all I played, honestly. I think I played only Castlevania for a good year or two because all those DS games were coming out one after another, and they were all so damn good. And if you did play that other game, what is it, Bloodstained? If you haven't played that and you are into Castlevania, play it. Uh, buy it, even if it's $10. I'm sure there's a place you can get it for free, but if you can buy it, play it. If it is, it is basically Castlevania just with a girl. Like, that's it. Really great game, really well put together. Story's cool. Uh, the ending's a little hard to figure out if you don't understand it. If I remember correctly, you gotta do some weird stuff to make it the real ending, but otherwise, amazing. I had to look it up. I couldn't figure it out. I, didn't, I had no idea what the hell they were talking about. So, um, and I also didn't know where to get the items. Like, there's items you have to get. I believe, I believe if I remember correctly, there was a thing where you have to, like, attack a background. I'm not going to go into it too much, but, like, it was, like, kind of cool. Like, you just don't know to do that. And, I mean, if you don't, it, I don't know how you would figure that out, but I guess you would figure it out eventually. Someone's just probably walking around with that one sword, and they just are, are like, jumping around attacking, and then they find it. So that's the kind of stuff that, like, was cool, and I think Castlevania Metroid really pushed forward on that. Uh, I think it was a great series. Both of them were great series, uh, which brings us to Super Mario, I guess. That was in that area. Yeah, Super Mario was a great game. Star World was awesome. Mario Sunshine was awesome. All the originals were awesome. Uh, the third one was a little weird for me. Second one was probably... I think second. the second one was really weird in the way it worked, um, but for some reason, I played that one the most. I don't think I wouldn't call it the best one. I just remember playing it the most. Uh, the first one was okay. I didn't really like that one as much. I did beat it a numerous a numerous times. I've beaten it, but I didn't really get into it too much. But the second one I played more than anything, and the third one, I think the third one was weird to me because it was like a dry graphic. It was it didn't look like that cartoon look that I like, and I it was weird to me. That's, I think that's why I like the second one better. But Super Mario World, I played, I, I can't even count, probably 100 times. Super Mario Sunshine, I probably played 100 times. I can't even count. That game literally kept me going forever. Um, the Yoshi games, I didn't really like. I any side, any side Yoshi thing wasn't for me. I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't think it was that that great. <laughs> uh, the Donkey Kong Country games, obviously, were like some of the best games that were ever made. Um, I don't. I, I played the first and second one. I don't know. If, I think they, they what Diddy's Adventure, and then they had like they started bringing in extra characters, and getting real crazy. And I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm like, I didn't really want to. I didn't really want to do that. But I did play them a lot. Uh, what else was in that time frame? I'm trying to think because there's not too much I really need to talk about. Mario. Mario was uh, essentially a you know a staple of everything. I mean, if, I, I don't even need to talk about it. Uh, I know people. A lot of people back then liked Crash Bandicoot. Uh, what was the other one? There was the, the two guys. I forgot what it was called. It was something else. There's Crash Bandicoot, and then there was another one. I did play Spyro the Dragon. That was another fun one that I played. I enjoyed that game a lot. I, I remember playing um, the, I think it was on PS1, I want to say. That game I played for a while. I enjoyed it for a little while, but after a while, it, it, it got boring. It did get boring. It wasn't something that I would. I probably would say that I would go back and revisit uh but i i I enjoyed it it was a good game i mean who doesn't like that um there was a game called it was called seven or eight it was a game on nintendo i think uh i have to think about it there was like an rpg game where you ran around and it was like old school i I think it was called like seven or something i forgot sword sword stone (laughs) i don't remember i can't i don't know either way that was a fun game obviously the final fantasy games were really good i never really got into grand theft auto that was, uh, I think, like I said, I, I played the first one, I think, and I beat up a bunch of hookers, and that was really it. Like, that was my that was my entire experience. I'm like, all right, we beat up some hookers, and we killed some guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move along now. And it's funny that we're talking about all these Smash Brothers heroes and people from Smash Brothers, but uh, I never play Smash Brothers. I, I don't like the game at all. I actually hate Smash Brothers. And I know a lot of people will be mad at that, but you know what? It is what it is. I, I, I've said this numerous times on numerous videos not including the podcast like all the videos i have horrible horrible opinions because i like horrible horrible things i want a game that really gets me i want a game that makes me hate my life because this game is hard 
or grindy. I would say grindy, not so much hard. I do enjoy hard games, but not like stupid hard. I don't want to. I don't want a game that needs like a a pixel frame rate, like a specific pixel frame to beat something like that. Screw that. Like I ain't doing that crap. Like what's that Mario game? The, the uh, like it was the lost the lost levels or whatever it was called. Like yeah, I'm I'm not playing that. I don't need to be that frustrated. It's it's fine. Someone else can beat that with their eyes closed, and I'm sure they're fine. You can beat Mike Tyson's Punch Out with your blindfolded, like that guy on uh, what is that the speed run thing they do every year? Uh, yeah, you can do that. I'm not. I'm just not doing it. Sorry, I don't like those games that much. <laughs> it's not that exciting to me. But I do like I do like games that challenge you. I think like RuneScape was more of a grind, and that's kind of why I liked RuneScape at that time. It's it was it was something that it was something new, and I enjoyed the fact that it kept the game going. I think that's really what the grind thing is for me. Like it keeps the game moving forward, where you don't have to technically you don't have to really accomplish much, but every day you log in, you can go do something different, you know and I think that's how I felt about it. New games more more than likely will try to force you in a direction of which to go, and I don't really like that part of it. I didn't. I, I enjoy being able to decide for myself what I think I need to do, or what I want to do, or what I you know wh- where what's where my progress goes. I want it to be in my hands, and a lot of times I think new games don't really they don't really have that. Yeah, I th- I feel like it's funny because these new games kind of give you direction, but they don't. I don't know how to explain that, and if you understand it, then good for you. Um, best franchise for me when I was in college: Tony Hawk Pro Skater. That is correct. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. All of them. I I played all of them. Wolverine, the one where you had Darth Maul, Darth Balls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the first one's great. Uh, I think I played. Almost every single one of them. The one with Bam in it was awesome. That was one of my favorite ones. Was it Tony Tony Hawk Underground? Great freaking game. Uh, I like that you have to pick your skate team and do all that stuff, and you get to choose which team you're on, and you got your your bully that you're trying to beat. And yeah, that game was great. I know a lot of people kind of crapped on it because it was weird, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was one of the more fun ones. And if you've never played it, go back and play it if you're a Tony Hawk fan because those are the those that's like the prime. The prime time gaming right there is all the Tony Hawks, and I'm actually considering going back and getting one of those. Uh, what is it? One of those uh, systems that you can literally just have all the games on it. Like there's like a, a twelve thousand games programmed into it. And if I get that, I think once I get a new system, I might just start playing old school games on here for the channel too, because I really, really like those kinds of games, and I, I think everyone would enjoy seeing some some old stuff and kind of reminiscing on what the old games were about. And I, I think I'm going to start doing that anyway. <laughs> um, I did play Tomb Raider. That was a, a one-off. That was like something that I thought was really fun. Like um, I actually played the 3D version one on PS1. It was really clunky. And for some reason, I enjoyed it. And I, that's all I'm going to say about it. Because to be honest, it was it was close to being good. But at the same time, like... It was bad. It was a bad game, but I just enjoyed it. I wouldn't recommend anyone going back to going back to play it. But yeah, I, I enjoyed that game a lot. the The Final Fantasies that were on Nintendo were really good. I played those a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a, a one off game that I personally played. Like, was it Wizards and Warriors? I think that's what it was called, right? Yeah, that was a weird one. Like, it was a side scrolling game where you were a knight. And you just jumped around. Yeah, not ghouls and goblins. It's wizards and warriors. And the bosses in that game were fun. I played that game all the time. The music was really cool. Like that would be a game I would totally play on on a video on because that was fun and old school. Uh, you run around. You get like all these pieces, and you got to find your way out of these dungeons. It was really old school. I liked it. Um, kind of remind me of in that, that same era as uh, ghouls and goblins though like the same kind of graphics but it was weird because you would jump high and you would have to find your way all the way up these trees to jump down it, it actually wasn't it wasn't like a it wasn't like a side scrolling in the sense that you just walk uh around when I mean, you walk straight and then get to a boss like it was one of those games where you had to climb around like a map and find your way to a specific spot by going like in and out of passageways and teleporters and things like that so definitely cool game 
I enjoyed that one. If you know that one, I'm sorry. That you're you have just dated yourself like me. That is a very old game, but yeah, great game. Love it, love it, love it. A lot of Nintendo games from that time that I I could say are probably some of the best ones that I've ever played. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in there that was really good. I mean, we can do this forever, but I like to break it up because that way I can have another episode of this. Because I love talking about old games. I, I could talk about old games forever. They are the best. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's good for today. We're good. Uh, so basically, that's all it. That's a lot of the old games that I used to play. And some that you may or may not like, and some that you may like. I mean, it's it's up to you. I mean, nobody's telling you what to like. I'm not telling you what to like. I'm just telling you what I don't like or what I do like. Don't think that uh, you know, just because I don't like something doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean like the world's going to end because I think Elden Ring is a piece of trash. Like, it just means that I'm the one. I'm one of those people who didn't like it. That's all it is. I mean, millions of people love it. I get it. it doesn't change that I hate it. So, yeah, get mad. Get mad. I hope you. I hope you love Elden Ring. <laughs> I hope you love Elden Ring so much that it, it burns you inside that I freaking think it's a garbage game. Garbage. I hated it. This is coming from it hurts my soul to say it too, because I love Dark Souls. It's just it's just I'm gonna trash on it all the time. Every time I, I have these podcasts, I'm I like trashing on one thing. Kind of like with Raid, how I like to trash on uh on Aethel, how she's trash. It's the same thing. I just like I like having one point of uh one point in a game where I can just make fun of it and hate it. Uh, so yeah, make sure uh, you guys are, are, if you're liking all this stuff that we're doing here and you want to support the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, share, tell your friends. I mean, a lot of people don't listen to podcasts, especially podcasts about gaming. I know it's a, it's a one-off kind of little thing, so that's fine. And it's, it's okay. But if somebody wants to hear about old games and you know, maybe they'll be interested and maybe they'll pass it along. And eventually, you know, we can do some other stuff. Maybe I'll make a TV show. Who knows? I don't know what the future holds. I just know that I like doing what I'm doing right now rather than going to work. I hate going to work. I hate doing all that stuff. So I would much rather work with you guys and uh, hang out and have comments and, and let people enjoy what we do. All right. So that's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Mobile Gamer Nerd. And you guys, take care.